hello students in this video i want to explain the preparation properties and structure of the hydroxyl amine formula of the hydroxyl amine is nh2oh formula of this compound can be easily remembered because amine group means nh3 group group and hydroxyl group means oh group so like that the formula of the hydroxyl amine becomes nh2oh first of all we go for the preparation methods of the hydroxyl amine the yeah, first uh, first method is the reduction of the nitrides here in this method sodium carbonate na2co3 sodium nitride nano2 sulfur dioxide gas so2 and barium hydroxide bah taken to are used as the starting materials so the steps that occur in this reaction are five in the first step sodium carbonate reacts with the sulfur dioxide gas in the presence of water and forms the sodium bicarbonate and sodium bisulfite sodium bicarbonate formula is nhco3 and sodium bisulfite formula is nhco3 in the second step what happens means the sodium bisulfite reacts with the sodium nitrite salts and forms the nitrous acid along with the sodium sulfite na2so3 in the third step the nitrous acid formed reacts with the sodium hydrogen sulfide formed in the first step and forms the hydroxyl amine sodium sulfonate this salt is also known as the sodium salt of hydroxyl amine disulfonic acid sodium salt of hydroxyl amine disulfonic acid so this sodium salt of hydroxyl amine disulfonic acid undergoes hydrolysis and forms the hydroxyl ammonium bisulfide along with the sodium sulfide here this hydroxyl amine hydroxyl amine ammonium bisulfate is treated with the barium hydroxide in order to remove the sulfuric acid and to separate the hydroxyl amine a sulfate is removed in the form of the barium sulfate as the precipitate next method is the electrolytic reduction of the nitric acid nitric acid formula is hno3 in this method if uh, the mixture of the h2so4 and hcl are added to the 50% hno3 and this mixture is used as the electrolyte and in this method mercury cathode or amalgamated lead is used as the cathode here nitric acid undergoes reduction and gives the hydroxyl amine this is very simple equation to balance in a nitric acid we have the three oxygen atoms and in a hydroxyl amine we have the only one oxygen atom so these two oxygen atoms are to be removed in the form of the water to remove the uh, two oxygen atoms we require the four hydrogen atoms and here in hydroxyl amine two more hydrogens we have to add so we have to add the uh, 6h plus ions here and in order to balance the charges we have to add the six electrons here so like that this equation can be easily balanced and the third step is the reduction of the nitric oxide nitric oxide nitric oxide formula is no here nitric oxide is reduced by using the mixture of the tin and hcl so here nitric oxide gas is passed into the mixture of the hcl solution and tin as a result this hydroxyl amine sorry this nitric oxide undergoes reduction and we get the hydroxyl amine this is very easy equation to balance in hydroxyl amine we have three hydrogen atoms whereas the in the uh, nitric oxide we have no hydrogen atoms so we have write three hydrogens here three nascent hydrogen atoms here which we get from the uh, reaction that occur between the tin and hcl here we get the hydroxyl amine as of salt which is known as the hydroxyl amine hydrochloride and that tin used in this reaction is removed by passing the h2s gas the h2s gas reacts with the stannous chloride and uh, this tin will be precipitated as the sulfate as a tin sulfide next the hydroxyl amine hydrochloride is treated with the sodium methoxide salt as a result uh, this hydroxyl amine separates out and we get the sodium chloride and methyl alcohol sodium chloride is uh, removed by filtration and methyl alcohol is removed by distillation method now we study the chemical properties of the hydroxyl amine in hydroxyl amine the oxidative state of the nitrogen is a minus 
1 whereas in ammonia oxidation state of the nitrogen is minus 3. So when nitroxylamine is heated it decomposes to give the ammonia along with the nitrogen and water and this is very easy to balance this equation because in hydroxylamine oxidation state of the nitrogen is minus 1 whereas in ammonia it is a minus 3. So in order to balance this reaction just we have to put 3 in front of the hydroxylamine. Otherwise we can balance the reaction in this way also. We can write the hydroxylamine as NH and H2O. So you on decomposing water molecule goes outside and to get the ammonia uh, we have to we require 3 hydrogen atoms from NH. So we have to take 3 hydroxylamine molecules. So like this also we can balance the uh, decomposition reaction. Next one is the oxidizing properties. So any substance that has oxygen atoms in it behaves as the oxidizing agent. And uh, as hydroxylamine contains oxygen atoms in it, it also behaves as the oxidizing agent. Here, hydroxylamine reacts with the sodium arsenide Na3SO3 and forms the sodium arsenide and this is the root equation or base equation for the oxidizing properties of the hydroxylamine. So here hydroxylamine decomposes to give the ammonia and one nascent oxygen atom. So here nothing is to worry about this equation. This is a very simple equation to balance. So from this hydroxylamine one oxygen atom is given to the sodium arsenide, arsenide and it becomes the sodium arsenate. Next hydroxylamine oxidizes ferrous hydroxide to the ferric hydroxide. Ferrous hydroxide has green color whereas the ferric hydroxide has the brown color. So from hydroxylamine we get one oxygen atom. It combines with water to give the two, hydro <coughs> two hydroxyl groups, two OH groups. So we can write that as the H2O plus O as the two OH groups. So here these OH groups are observed by the ferrous hydroxide and converts into the ferric hydroxide. Now we go for the reducing properties of the hydrogen. So any substance that has the hydrogen atoms in it behaves as the reducing agent. And as the hydroxylamine contains hydrogen atoms in it, it also behaves as the any substance that has hydrogen atoms in it behaves as the reducing agent. As the hydroxylamine contains hydrogen atoms in it, it also behaves as the reducing agent. And the base equation or the root equation that is responsible for the redu reducing properties of hydroxylamine is this one. According to this equation, two molecules of hydroxylamine decompose combinedly to give the nitrous oxide along with the four nascent hydrogen atoms. These nascent hydrogen atoms are responsible for the reducing properties of the hydroxylamine. For example, here hydroxylamine reduces the failing solution. Failing solution is a mixture of two reagents, failing A and failing B. Failing A is alkaline copper sulfate solution and failing B is alkaline solution of Rucelli salt. By mixing these two reagents, we get the a blue color complex compound but for the sake of convenience failing reagent is represented as the cupric oxide cupric oxide formula is CuO and on reduction with on heating with the hydroxylamine this failing solution forms a red color precipitate which is known as the cuprous oxide cuprous oxide formula is Cu2O here this equation is very simple to balance because here from two molecules of hydroxylamine we get the four hydrogen atoms and from the two cupric oxide molecules we get the one oxygen atom so to balance the or in order to convert the four hydrogen atoms into water we require the two oxygen atom so we have to multiply this equation with the two whenever we multiply this with two we get to here 4 CuO like that this is very simple to balance this equation and as 6 hydrogen atoms are here we can write here 3 water molecules. Now here hydroxylamine reduces the tolens reagent also. Tolens reagent is a mixture of the silver nitrate 
and uh, aqua solution of ammonia so that's why toluene reagent means nothing but ammonical silver nitrate but it is also a complex compound but for the sake of convenience toluene reagent is uh, represented as the silver oxide ago sorry ag2o so this ag2o on heating with hydroxyl amine is reduced to the silver metal you know very well the silver metal is white in color so this silver metal is precipitated on the walls of the test tube so this is known as the silver mirror test also this reaction this reduction reactions of the failing solution and toluene reagent are also exhibited by the carbonyl compounds and the monosaccharides like glucose this hydroxyl amine reduces the mercuric chloride also mercuric chloride is a colorless solution first of all this hydroxyl amine reduces this mercuric chloride to the mercurous chloride mercurous chloride formula is hg2cl2 or simply hgcl this mercurous chloride mercurous chloride is in white color so it is a white color precipitate and this is also very easy to balance this equation after that this mercurous chloride is reduced to this mercury metal which is in black color so it is a black color precipitate so here hydroxyl amine first reduces mercury chloride to the mercurous chloride and then after it reduces mercurous chloride to the metallic mercury here this is also very easy to balance this equation because from two molecules of the hydroxyl amine we get the four hydrogen atoms and from two molecules of mercury chloride we get the two chlorine atoms so to balance the uh, four hydrogen atoms that are obtained from this uh, mercury chloride we require the four uh, mercuric chloride so like that we can easily balance this equation and uh, here from one mercurous chloride we get the two chlorine atoms so to balance the four hydrogen atoms that are obtained from the hydroxyl amine we require the two mercurous chloride so like that we can balance this equation also very easily now hydroxyl amine reduces the halogens also for example this hydroxyl amine reduces the chlorine to the hydrogen chloride hydroxyl amine behaves as a base because in the hydroxyl amine on the nitrogen atom one electron pair is there due to this hydroxyl amine act as a lewis base so it combines with the acids like hcl and h2so4 and forms salts here the salt formed with the hcl is called as a hydroxyl amine hydrochloride we can write this as nh3 plus oh and cl minus we can call this as hydroxyl ammonium chloride also this hydroxyl amine reacts with the hydrogen sulfate or sulfuric acid h2so4 is sulfuric acid and forms hydroxyl ammonium sulfate this salt is known as hydroxyl ammonium sulfate then this hydroxyl amine reacts with the oxygen gas also this ox this hydroxyl amine absorbs the oxygen gas present in the air slowly and itself converts into the nitrous acid nitrous acid formula is hno2 so this is also a very simple reaction to balance so we are at nh2oh and o2 we get hno2 and h2o 1 plus 2 three oxygen atoms here 2 plus 1 three oxygen atoms are there so there is no need to write any coefficient in front of the hydroxyl amine or in front of the oxygen atom next reaction is that reaction with the carbonyl compounds carbonyl compounds means aldehydes and ketones this hydroxyl amine in the presence of the weak acids combines with the carbonyl compounds that means with aldehydes and ketones and to form condensed products these condensed products are known as the oxynes the condensed products formed with the 
carbonyl compounds are here called as the oxymes so here this hydroxyl in here is reacting with the acetaldehyde acetaldehyde formula is CH3CHO here this H plus and represents the acid and we get the condensed product condensed reaction means a reaction in which small molecules like water alcohol and HCl are removed is known as the condensation reaction so as small molecule water is going out we can call it as the condensed condensation reaction this condensed product is known as the here acetaldoxime here this compound is known as the acetone CH3COCH3 this hydroxyl reacts with the acetone and forms a condensed product known as the acetoxime so just we have to put oxime after writing the uh, carbon name of the carbonyl compound next reaction is that with the cyclohexone here hydroxylamine reacts with the cyclohexone cyclohexone is a ketone and forms a condensed product known as the cyclohexone oxime the cyclohexone oxime in the presence of the oleum oleum means pyrosulfuric acid this is also known as the pyrosulfuric acid it provides the H plus ions here in the presence of the H plus ions it undergoes the Beckman rearrangement Beckman rearrangement we get this Beckman rearrangement generally in organic chemistry and forms a cyclic amide which is known as the caprolactam this caprolactam compound is a cyclic amide the cyclic amide again in the presence of which is H plus ions undergoes polymerization and forms a compound known as the nylon 6 nylon 6 so the condensation reaction exhibited by the hydroxylamine is used in the preparation of the polymers uh, such as the nylon 6 now we go for the discussion about the structure hydroxylamine may exist in the two forms one and two one is uh, NH2OH and the second one is the O double bond NH3 here we have the support for the existence of the both the forms first of all we discuss uh, about the evidence or support that is available in the favor of uh, structure one here we can prepare the uh, hydroxylamine by reducing the nitric acid nitric acid formula is HNO3 and the structure is like this OH and NO2 so this reaction supports the structure 1 Second, secondly this hydroxylamine combines with the nitrosobenzene and forms the isodiazobenzene isodiazobenzene so this also supports the structure 1 the structure 1 again exists in the two geometrical isomers first one is cis and the other one is the trans now we go for the evidence or support that is available in the favor of the structure 2 here we can prepare the hydroxylamine by reducing the nitric oxide and already we know the structure of the nitric acid that is n double bond o so simply here this nitric oxide reacts with the hydrogen atom and forms this O double bond NH3. Secondly, this hydroxyl amine ox <coughs> reacts with the titanium tetroxide and forms H2TiO3 and gives the ammonia. The, here, this ammonia is present in this one hydroxyl amine. So, this also supports the second structure of the hydroxyl amine. So, these two reactions are in the favor of the structure 2.